Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Lenovo has been doing some experiments with the ThinkPad line of computers recently, and I got in this one not too long ago to review. This is the Z16 Gen 1, and this has a 16-inch display, but some new design elements that are a little different than other ThinkPads. We're going to take a closer look at this large ThinkPad in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this ThinkPad is all about. Now the price point on this right now is about $1,500 depending on configuration. This is significantly lower than what it was introduced at not that long ago. So the price point is relatively reasonable for what you're getting here. This has a Ryzen 7 Pro processor, a 6850H. Our review loaner here has 16 gigabytes of RAM in dual channel configuration. Of note though, the RAM is not upgradable. It is soldered onto the main board. This model has a 512 gigabyte SSD that is upgradable if you wanted to swap that out down the road. And it's not all that difficult to get into the casing here. You just have to unscrew the bottom portion of the case to get in. As I mentioned at the outset, this has a 16 inch display. It is running at 1920 by 1200, so not a super high res display here, but you get uh, some be battery benefits from that. It is IPS and runs at 100% of sRGB. It'll go up to 400 nits of brightness. It looks pretty good even under my studio lights here. And of course, you're running with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio on it. Now as a larger laptop, this is a bit on the heavier side. It comes in at 4.3 pounds or 1.95 kilograms. So it is a bit heavy. It is mostly metal and the metal they're using is about 75% recycled aluminum. The only plastic I see is on the display here and they say this is over 95% recycled and some of the other internal plastic components are using similar recycled plastics as well. It feels pretty good from a build quality perspective. The weight is very well balanced here. So if I lift up the display, as you can see, it doesn't take the keyboard with it. So that's always nice to see there. And it has some design elements that are a little different than what you typically see on a ThinkPad. You've got these uh, nice polished edges here with some curves to them. So if you're a ThinkPad fan that wants something a little different, I think you'll find that here in its overall design. As for ports, there are a few interesting ones on this one. On the left hand side, we have two USB 4 ports, and these are mostly compatible with Thunderbolt devices. So if you wanted to connect up a, a Thunderbolt external GPU, for example, you could do that. Both of these ports will run up to 40 gigabits per second. So that's nice to see, especially on an AMD machine. We looked at the Z13, which is the sibling of this laptop a few months ago, and we were able to get a Thunderbolt GPU working off of one of these ports. You also have a full-size SD card reader here on the side. Just note though that when you put a card in, it will stick out here a little bit, so it's not gonna be something you'll be traveling around with there. On the other side, you have a couple of more ports. You do have a USB Type-C port here, but this is only USB 3.2. So your faster ports are on the left-hand side. As you'll note, there's no USB-A port, so you will need some adapters for older peripherals. Here you've got a Kensington lock slot, a headphone jack, and your power switch is right there. Now, I was not that crazy about the webcam on this one. As you can see, it runs a little on the dark side, even though I've got my studio lights on. The other issue I noticed with it is that I have to pull the display much further forward to get myself properly framed in the image here, as you can see. So I'm not sure if maybe this webcam wasn't installed properly at the factory or if this is something prevalent throughout. But when I have my display at the comfortable angle here, you can see I've got a ton of headroom here that makes it uh, not so ideal for looking at the screen. So that was my only gripe with this. You might need to get an external webcam paired up with this to find the right angle. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, they're experimenting with some different design ideas on this ThinkPad. So the keyboard here looks like your standard ThinkPad keyboard, but it feels a little different. It feels closer to the Lenovo consumer keyboards. The travel is 1.35 millimeters. That's how far down these keys press when you push them. And that's a little deeper than many consumer laptops, but not much. 
So if you're used to that deeper key travel on the ThinkPad, this one's going to feel a little different. It does, though, have the track point, so you still have that familiar interface. But the entire trackpad area here is all glass. So this is one of those haptic trackpads that doesn't actually push down. And I found it's a little, uh, little different on the uh, track point here because typically on a regular ThinkPad, you have physical buttons here at the top to pair up with this button here. And although it feels pretty close, it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're usually feeling around for something to click on. There's no physical bump where this button section begins up here for the track point, although they do have a bump here to differentiate the left and right hand side of the trackpad for enabling that scrolling function. So a little different than your typical ThinkPad, but the trackpad component is really nice. It tracks quite well. The haptics feel very natural and all in it feels very nice and premium, but I think track point users will need a little bit of an adjustment to get used to a virtual button to push. And of course, the keyboard is backlit. There are two biometric options on here. You have a fingerprint reader on the keyboard and the camera will also enable Windows face detection for logging in that way. And for a large laptop, battery life on this is pretty good. I think you'll get around 10 to 11 hours of usage provided you keep the display brightness down and stick to the basics. This does have a pretty powerful Ryzen processor, so if you start pushing it with video editing and gaming and that sort of thing, of course, that's going to eat into the battery life more significantly. But for basic work, it's pretty efficient, and I think you'll definitely get a workday out of this one. Let's take a look now, though, at how it performs. We'll begin with some web browsing and work our way up from there. All right, so let's begin with the NASA.gov homepage, and we'll browse around a little bit on here and see how everything renders in. As expected, it's very snappy here, as you can see, and everything works as expected as I'm browsing around the website here. This does have a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board, and we are currently connected to my regular Wi-Fi 6 access point. And a little earlier, we loaded up my YouTube channel and played back a 1080p 60 frames per second video file. We did have a couple of drop frames when it first started, which does occur from time to time, but overall it was able to keep up and play back that video successfully. So if you're doing Netflix and some of the other streaming services, you shouldn't have a problem consuming those on this laptop. Also some pretty decent speakers here. They are upward firing on the sides. Good stereo separation, nice and clear, although they don't have very deep bass. But for general entertainment, it's fine. It's certainly much better than some of the lower cost laptops out there. And if you wanted more bass, you can obviously plug in some headphones or go the Bluetooth headphone route on this one. On the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 211, which is right in line with what I would expect out of a Ryzen machine of this generation. So performance here looks pretty good. Now you can also do some lightweight video editing on this without the need to plug in an external GPU. I've got a 4K 60 frames per second project here running. And what I'm gonna do is just drop a transition down here and see how fast everything renders in. So we'll play the uh, video back here. And as you can see, it's pretty good at getting through those transitions without having to pre-render. And this is the kind of performance I think you can expect from this device. So if you are doing some basic video editing kind of along the lines of what you see me do here on this channel, I think this will be fine. But of course, adding more graphical horsepower will certainly result in much better performance. So I would say this is good for you know, prosumer level editing, but not professional editing. Now this does have that Ryzen processor on board, and as a result, you'll get some good gaming performance here. This is Fortnite running at the native resolution of the display, 1920 by 1200. And we set the settings on the high preset just to see what we could get out of it. And as you can see here, we're north of 30 frames per second, hovering around 45 to 50 most of the time. And you can, of course, get higher frame rates with lower settings, but still pretty nice to see this level of performance without an external GPU attached. We also ran Doom Eternal, and here we were able to get the game running with medium settings between 60 and 65 frames per second, so very good performance there, again, at the native resolution. This is Red Dead Redemption 2. And here we ran at low settings at 1920 by 1200. This is a pretty demanding game, as many of you know. And here we were getting about 30 to 40 frames per second most of the time. So most of these current games are very, very playable here with 
above average settings in most cases. So I think from a gaming perspective, if you are a casual gamer that wants to play a couple games while you're getting your work done, I think this laptop will do quite well at that. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 2,679. And of note, this laptop is beating a gaming laptop from just a couple of years ago, the Legion Y530, also from Lenovo, that had a GTX 1050 Ti discrete GPU on board. So this gives you a sense as to just how far these Ryzen processors have come in a very short period of time. So it's a very capable little gaming device here. It won't match a current gaming laptop, of course, but it's certainly uh, going to hold its own on many demanding games, provided you keep those settings in check. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a score of 98.8%. And that indicates we won't see a lot of throttling on this one when it's placed under heavy sustained load. We certainly didn't see that in our testing. Although I will note the fan noise on this is a bit on the noisy side. Not as noisy as a gaming laptop, but noisier than some of the other ThinkPads that we've looked at uh, during this uh, last year or so. So definitely a noisy fan when you place it under load, but generally when you're sitting here at the desktop or doing web browsing or basic work tasks on it, you're not going to hear that fan all that often. It just kicks on when you're doing some video editing or things that stress the processor a bit more. Now, we always like to look at Linux here on the channel when we review laptops. So we booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu to see how compatible everything was. Audio, Wi-Fi, video, and Bluetooth were all detected automatically. The track point worked, and the performance felt pretty good out of this as well. So if you are looking to experiment with operating systems other than Windows, you should be able to get up and running on this one fairly easily. All in, I felt this was a pretty decent laptop from Lenovo. It's got a nice display, even though it's not a fancy 4K display, at least on this review loaner, there is a 4K version available. But actually, I was very pleased with how nice the display looks, even at the lower resolution, and you pick up the better battery life as a result of that. Certainly, the design here is very different than other ThinkPads, and if you're very much used to the way those ThinkPads feel, you're going to need some adjustment here. And this is very similar to the Z13 that we looked at recently. And I found that Lenovo kind of experiments a little bit to see what works with ThinkPad users before they change the rest of the product line. So we'll have to see how well this design fares. But it's uh, nice for what it is, I think. My biggest gripe, though, is the webcam. I don't like the position of it. And certainly, the image quality needs a little bit of work there. But beyond that, I think it's a solid offering. And right now, with the price where it is, I think it's pretty reasonably priced for what you're getting here. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.